What's good homies and homets? If you guys watched my last video, you know I'm working on the e-magazine or the e-draft guide, which will be available in August. And in that, we'll have my top 250 head point PPR rankings. So I'm starting to work on that now, and those are gonna be adjusted throughout the summer, obviously, but I just posted to my, uh, my blog my top 50 half point PPR rankings for the 2017 fantasy football season. So I wanna do a quick video and just kinda highlight anything within those rankings that maybe stand out or are a lot different than what you're hearing within, I guess, the fantasy community right now. So if you wanna go just check that out, it's really just like a list. It's not like a blog post or anything like that. You can head over to my website, which will be linked below. It's bdgeat.com, blog section. Um, so to start off the list, I have Le'Veon Bell. Them and him and David Johnson are pretty much interchangeable. I'll take Antonio Brown over Zeke because obviously Brown's had the consistency. Zeke, the Cowboys lost a couple offensive linemen this offseason, and obviously his receiving ability is not a strong point there. He hasn't been hugely involved in the passing game in Dallas, so I think that gives Brown the edge. But you know, I'm happy with either four of those guys in the uh, in the top four. And to be honest with you, that's like my elite, elite tier right there. Those first four guys are, you know, usually every year there's like a, there's like a top two, three, four tier that you want to get in to get the elite guys. And then the next few guys also fall into a tier by themselves. And for me, those first four guys are them. They are guaranteed huge workload, um, very minimal risk in their position. And, you know, that's, that's what gets it for me for those four guys. Now I'm a lot higher than Jordy Nelson. He was in my sleeper video, obviously. Not, he's not a sleeper, but he's very undervalued as a number one in that Green Bay offense. Rodgers is guaranteed almost 35 to 40 touchdowns. The chemistry between them two is absurd. So for him to be going picks 13, 14, 15 behind guys like T.Y., Michael Thomas, Des Bryant is just ridiculous to me. I also have Mike Evans pretty low on this list to compare to where, where he's going. So I like A.J. Green more than I like Mike Evans. I think the addition of O.J. Howard over the middle is going to take away some red zone looks for Evans. I think the addition of Deshaun Jackson is going to take away a lot of deep balls from him. So Mike Evans was like top five in terms of yards per I can't remember if it's yards per target or yards per reception last year. I think it was yards per target or yards per air yards, something like that. That didn't even make sense. But he got a ton of deep balls thrown his way, basically. And uh, the only player with, I think, over 90 targets that actually beat out Mike Evans in that category was Deshaun Jackson. So now Deshaun Jackson obviously comes over to Tampa Bay to line up opposite Mike Evans. And I think that definitely caps his, his long ball upside and it caps his red zone upside a little bit. Still a stud wide receiver one, no brainer. Um, but not the top five, top eight pick that people are kind of putting him as. And I have Doug Baldwin, probably a lot higher than most people. I love Doug Baldwin this year. He's the clear cut number one. They really have no other weapons outside besides him. You've seen the offense convert to a passing offense in each of the last five years linearly. Russell Wilson has more passing attempts, more passing yards. Doug Baldwin's had more receptions, targets, receiving yards in all these years. He's um, he's been a back-to-back -back top 10 wide receiver in fantasy, so I don't understand uh, where the disrespect is coming from. It's obviously like the lack of flesh and the lack of size, so people kind of disrespect him in that way, but he's an incredible all-around receiver that's going to get a huge target load because there's not a lot of weapons behind him. Next, we got Marshawn Lynch up at 23. Also talked about him in my sleeper video, so I'm not going to get too into it, which you can find here. Here, I'm not sure where it pops up on the screen. The numbers Latavius Murray put up in that backfield last year are ridiculous to me because he wasn't even good. He averages a terrible 4.0 yards per carry while all the other running backs in Oakland were at like 5.6 yards per carry. That offensive line is one of the best, if not the best, run blocking line in the entire league. And Latavius Murray was a top 10, top 13 running back the last couple of years with 195 carries in 2016. So Marshawn doesn't need 300 carries to be effective. All he needs are those goal line looks which are coming in an explosive offense behind a ridiculously good offensive line. Maybe you're questioning his workload, his stamina. He doesn't need that to be really successful in this offense as we saw last year with Latavius Murray. And Marshawn Lynch is way better as a runner, obviously. This like 24 to, to 30, one range is really up for grabs. This is gonna be like a make or break for guys because it's like, Hopkins, Robinson, um, Carlos Hyde, so many question marks around these guys. 
guys who either you know were super super high draft picks last year and busted out and now you're kind of banking on a rebound year so you have Terrell Pryor who's moving over to a new situation you know free agent moves don't always work out as you expect them to I'm a big fan of Carlos Hyde all the rumors around him though that the new regime doesn't really like him they handpicked that rookie running back Joe Williams and you know he could overtake him Carlos Hyde's a talented ass dude if he's healthy he could stay on the field he can be a huge difference maker in fantasy I just think this area right here is is where like three or four of those guys are going to be like league winners you know like if you hit on them correctly they're league winners like you don't know if Brandon Cooks gives you a safe floor right like he's an explosive player in an offense that's going to score 30 points a game he's going to have his boom and bust weeks but then you have guys like Terrell Pryor who you don't know if he's going to finish as he could easily if he finished as like wide receiver eight this year no one would be shocked I have him as wide receiver what 15 at only the 29th pick though so if he finishes at wide receiver like 23 we also wouldn't be shocked I'm erring on the side of him finishing closer to the top 10 than I am outside of it but there's just a ton of question marks that are really not going to be answered until the you know the summer kind of wraps up I would say obviously Leonard Fournette has probably the highest floor of anyone in that in that uh, area because you know he's going to be the the workhorse there he's going to get a ton of touches but like how many of those are going to be on the goal line so it's not going to be a ton of scoring opportunities but i mean he could easily get 270 to 290 carries in a shitty offense um so my second tight end off the board jordan reed is obviously someone who can't stay healthy but when he is healthy his fantasy points per game almost rival gronkowski's so i think at, at pick 30 rather than going gronk in round two or three wait wait 15 picks and get jordan reed later I should have put the ADP, the current ADP of each player on this, to be honest with you, to give you a better idea for where they're going in drafts, but these are just my rankings. Then you have guys like Jarvis Landry, who I think is, is such a safe floor player. He's been PPR wide receiver 13 last year, 10 the year before that. He gets a million targets. He's averaged, I think, 138 targets a game, uh, a year, <laughs> not a game, over the last two years. Not much has changed in that Miami offense. Um, they brought in Julius Thomas for goal line looks, obviously, but that's never what Jarvis Landry has done. He only got two targets inside the 10 last year, so that's not where he's getting his fantasy points from. He's getting them from targets, receptions, and receiving yards. So if you're in a PPR league, getting Jarvis Landry as wide receiver 16 is an absolute steal because that's his absolute floor. And then you have more question marks. Alshon Jeffrey, Sammy Watkins, Keenan Allen. I like Jeffrey because I just still believe in his, you know, his prototype build uh, with, with an up-and-coming quarterback. I don't really believe in Carson Wentz as a great talent, but Jeffrey should be the number one there. You have Watkins, whose injury risk is super high, as is Keenan Allen's. Keenan Allen's coming back to a team that has a ton of weapons now. Hunter Henry's emerging as a really good tight end. They obviously have Terrell Williams, who emerged. They took Mike Williams in the... Top, I think number seven overall. So they have so many weapons that I'm not sure Keenan Allen's going to get those like 10 to 12 targets that he was getting per game. So I'm a little lower on him. Then you have a couple of rookie backs in there. I love Joe Mixon. Gio Bernard is coming back from an ACL tear. You have Jeremy Hill, who's just sucked ass the last two years. His contract's up this year, so Mixon was definitely a replacement. He's a better runner than Hill is. He's a better I'm not, I'm not so sure he's a better pass catcher than Gio is, but he's much better overall athlete, runner, and running back. He can play all three downs. So I love Joe Mixon's upside here. You're getting a guy who has top five potential at pick 30. Actually, I think his ADP is like pick 45 or 50. So this is a crazy steal. And my first quarterback off the board is Tom Brady. I've talked about it. He will be my QB1 in every fantasy draft. I'm not saying I'm going to pick him in every draft, but he is my QB1 ranked for the entire summer. I understand A-Rod and his consistency. But adding Brandon Cooks to, to the mix where Brandon Cooks is, is a handful of players. There's a handful of players in the NFL that can turn a short dump off or a slant into a 90-yard touchdown. And it might begin and end with Brandon Cooks and Odell Beckham. And that's an added dynamic to this offense that the Patriots have really never had. And imagine that with Tom Brady. Add like three or four of those plays over the course of the year and Brady is just unstoppable. Then you have a run of four wide receivers off the board. Love Golden Tate, same argument as Jarvis Landry. Floor is super safe in PPR leagues. He's always finishing above his ADP and where you're getting him in drafts. So that's a guy that you want to round out your wide receiver core with. If you can get an elite guy on top and then Golden Tate is your wide receiver too, you're getting steady production every single week. Fitz, you know, no more Michael Floyd noise. They really don't have a lot of weapons there in Arizona besides David Johnson. A question mark on John Brown because of last year, obviously dealing with the sickle cell 
stuff. Uh, he should be coming back strong, but either way, that leaves a, the whole middle of the field wide open for Larry Fitz, who's been a consistent producer, top 15 wide receiver in PPR um, over the last couple of years, and I don't see those targets or those numbers dropping off. So he's another safe play that you can get later in the draft. Just, I can't get behind these Denver wide receivers. There's, for me, right, I understand the, the, the argument I'm making is like for a high floor between Golden Tate and Fitz, but Thomas is going way higher than where I have him ranked here. I think he's going like pick 25 to 30, and there's no ceiling with Thomas with these quarterbacks. He had a dip in production last year. He's getting older. Um, like I said, they just don't have a good offense, so I'm not sold on Thomas this year. And then towards the end, I think I'm going to move Abdullah ahead of Crowell and Anderson. I love Crowell, you know, as a talent. I think he could be a feature back in that offense, but they're just not going to let it happen. Duke Johnson will get a ton of receptions. And that offense just isn't good enough to let him have enough opportunities. So it's almost it's almost the situation that that Gurley has in St. Louis, where he's a good back. Gurley's obviously more talented, that's why he's going way higher. Um, but they both have receiving backs there. They both have um, you know a terrible offense. Cleveland has a much better offensive line than the Rams, which is you know a plus there. And he's someone with big upside if he can take over that workhorse role. But I see um, I, I see more potential in the fact that his floor is pretty nice. And then Amir Abdullah, man, all reports point to him being the feature back there. Um, Theoretic obviously will get his touches as the pass catcher, but Abdullah is more than capable. He's a really good athlete coming out of college, a really good pass catcher. So I, I don't think Theoretic will get anywhere near like the 70 or 80 catches he's had in previous years. I think Abdullah will get a nice 40, 45, maybe even 50 receptions as a running back there. Um, and you know that Detroit offense... They don't run the ball a ton because their line's not good, but the way they run it is by short dump-offs. And that's so valuable in PPR leagues for running backs. Even if he gets 10, 11 carries in a game, he can add in five to six receptions and, and give you RB2 numbers. And, and he's going super late in drafts. So I think he's a late round running back, not a late round, but like a mid round running back that can anchor your team and be a piece of a championship run. Rounded out with B. Marsh. I love B. Marsh this year. I mean, he's a wide receiver 25 in my rankings, 49th overall. You know, I just I just think New York hasn't had a red zone threat like him. They're forcing it to smaller receivers like Shepard and and uh, Odell. And the last time they had a red zone threat like Marshall was Plaxico Burris, who's an absolute beast. I think Marshall will get a ton of targets there in New York. I still believe in Marshall's talent, man. He, I, he had a shitty year, but on tape, nothing. He, he didn't fall off on tape. It, it wasn't anything that was his play. It's not like his old age. He still looked really, really, really good. But the quarterback play was just abysmal. I read a stat earlier this offseason. It was like 44% of the balls that were thrown to B. Marsh were catchable. Only 44% of them. Like, What are you supposed to do when 50% of your passes aren't even in arm's length to reach, right? So I don't knock Brandon Marshall. He's in a much better situation this year. I think he gives you easy wide receiver two numbers. And then we have Travis Kelsey. So, you know, Greg Olson, Travis Kelsey, they are both at the end of the, at the list. And they're guys I'll definitely be targeting uh, instead of jumping up for Rob Gronkowski. Greg Olson hasn't missed a game since 2007. It's ridiculous. The fact that he's going. He's actually going, I think, pick 60 in drafts right now. I have him at 47 overall. Travis Kelsey, another guy. Travis Kelsey's going way before Greg Olson. So I'll bet I'll have Greg Olson on a lot of my teams this year, just given the fact that he's not at injury risk. He's just been so consistent. I know he was a little lopsided last year. He finished the season very poorly in terms of fantasy statistics. So I think you just have to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he's been doing this for so long that, you know, he'll be fine and he'll figure this out. Especially Cam Newton had a terrible year last year. So a lot of that probably falls on him on Greg Olson's production. Would assume a bounce back year from Cam, not to 2015 levels, but if anything, last year was kind of an outlier. So I, I'd see an increased play. And that's gonna wrap this video up. I know it was quick. I just wanted to get some content out to you guys, let you know what I'm working on, how I'm feeling. So if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed, definitely subscribe. Go check out the other videos that I've put up, mock drafts, sleepers, busts, all that kind of stuff. All this will be linked in the description, but go follow me on Twitter, B-D-G-E-A-T Fantasy. Go subscribe to the blog. The website's linked down low. And if you need any gear for your fantasy football league, I'm talking draft boards for live drafts, championship belts, trophies, rings, any of that good shit, I have uh, an affiliate link down below to fantasyjocks.com. They are the best gear in the industry, in the market. I promise you they have good shit. I've been using it for the last couple of years. And yeah, leave a comment down below if you want to talk rankings, baby. See y'all next time.
Yo, on the West Coast, courtesy of Detroit, Michigan. Take no shortcuts like a midget auditioning. I don't mince words when I sense beef. Nigga go against me, grind his ass in the midst meat. Pause, I'm as undefeated as Father Time is. Let the dogs out take cover like lioness. You're not a doctor.